Hi everybody, welcome to Sprague Wood Turning. My name is Jim. If you haven't been here before, this is predominantly a turning channel where each and every week I show people how to make things on the lathe. This week I'm going to be working with something that I never have worked with before, and that is you. Uh, I got this many, many years ago. Uh, I've got three in total that we're going to cast this week. Uh, should be interesting. I've never worked with this. Surprisingly, it's, it feels quite hard, so that should work well on the lathe. So I've already cut these three pieces to size. All we have to do is clean these up and get them ready for casting. So let's do that. I'd like to personally thank you all for stopping in to watch this week's video. I do upload every Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, of course, I turn my videos into premieres so that we can use the live chat function. But uh, yeah, you, I've never used it before. I do have a longer length of this and I've been holding out for years. Just, I think I was just waiting for my resin turning career to start. So that's what we're going to do with this piece. Got to remove that bark though. Let's go to the belt sander. This is painful. I'm sure you guys are saying the same thing. <laughs> So I've used this method a number of times, showing it here on the channel, you know, and this is just really how I deal with really stubborn bark. Uh, it is important that the epoxy bonds to the wood and not the bark. Uh, you do have to be careful when you're on here. If, if you're not, you know, you, uh, you certainly can get injured. Like right there. I had to turn the camera off because, uh, well, it wasn't PG language. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Um, anyway, uh, now I'm wearing gloves and uh, hopefully I won't be exfoliating any more skin. I should have been working on the top of that and not on the very edge of it. And that's why that happened. It's, it's not a big deal. I, I did lose some skin, but that's not the first time that that's happened. You think I'd learn by now. So that's the layout that we're going to go for. And so we're just going to glue these in place in the hopes that they're not going to lift and we're going to cast them. This week we're using deep casting epoxy from Designer Epoxy. Uh, this is going to be a deep pour, so there's no way you're going to get away with using anything but a deep cast. And we're going to use pearl red is going to be the main color. And then we're going to use some hyper shift or blue, green, and gold. And just to darken up the casting a little bit, I'm going to throw in some black pearl. Not, not very much. I find it gives it a richer tone. And don't forget to scrape the bottom and the sidewalls. It's very important. All right, here's your first liter and a half. Okay, I'll easily take another one, one of those for sure, and probably more. Right back. Here's another liter and a half. Uh, I'm going to give it, I'm going to say three quarters of a liter and I know that this is really going to soak that epoxy up. So I wouldn't be a bit surprised if it isn't well down past those, but man, I don't want to, I am worried about thermal cracking. I mean, we know how to deal with it if it happens, but I really don't want it this time around. And here's three quarters of a liter. So that'll bring it to almost four liters of resin. And of course, deep cast is only meant to be four inches deep, and this is over six inches worth of pour, so let's hope we don't get any thermal cracking. All right, this is gonna go into my pressure pot. We'll see you guys in there in three days. Well, good morning. Uh, I wish I had good news for you, but I don't. Uh, we've had we've got a floater this one here lifted the glue must have failed which tells me this got hot I can see how the the epoxy has dropped off here uh, 
So, I'm thinking that there's probably gonna be thermal cracking down inside of this, but I don't see any on the top. And uh, anyway, let's get this out and then we'll figure out what we're gonna do from here to uh, save this piece. Well, I don't see any thermal cracking. Zoom me in here a little bit. I do not see any. Oddly enough, there's some bubbles here, which is kind of funny. Something I usually don't deal with too much, that's for sure. No, it all looks good. Hmm. I, th I was thinking there'd be some thermal cracking in there. Ah, so what do we do here? Ah, I think what I'm going to do... This is a bit of a lost cause. I mean, we're just going to have to live with this, whatever form we do make with this. Because it comes up right here. The rest of them are going to be down at the bottom. Maybe this will be the top. I'm not sure. But I think what I might do is pinch this between centers and then grind down, grind down the epoxy kind of like a wave, if you will. Give it a, a natural edge. And then we'll do another pour. So believe it or not, I've been actually waiting for the right casting to come along to try this technique. Not that I am overly enthusiastic that I have to do this technique because it really puts me behind. But, you know, I don't, there's, there's probably any number of ways that I could have addressed this. I think that this is probably the one that's, when, when you look at the finished piece, You'll never realize why there's, say, two different colors of, of epoxy in here. Even though I try to match them, the, the, the color is off. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little further on. But, you know, this, is, um, this gives you a chance to explore your creativity. And, you know, there's, there's a part of me that, that says maybe I should have gone for a total different color. Uh, I did... You know, spoiler alert, I did mix kind of the same color and, and put it back in the casting. But uh, anyway, when you're using this Cutsell sander, be very, very careful as well. I've got a death grip on that thing. And it's another thing that can <laughs> exfoliate your skin rather quickly as well, as others have found out. So anyway, I'm just going to get rid of any hard edges and um, try and make it look like this was meant to be. That's the whole idea behind what I'm doing right now. And yeah, it's dusty, very dusty. I thought that I would cut off that long piece because it's just gonna be in the way if I wanna put a weight on this to hold it down. So the casting will go back into the original bucket. There's the original mixing bucket. So I just wipe out the sides and let it cure in the bottom, then pop it out. And for this pour, we're gonna be using an art cast. And I'm pretty much forced to use art cast just because of time constraints. Uh, if I had to use deep cast, that would have been another 72 hours and well, uh, there just wouldn't have been a video. So I'm going to mix this art cast up exactly the same as deep cast. Uh, the only difference is this is a one to one. So typically when I'm working with deep cast, I, I do it in 1.5 liter pours. But with this one here, I did 1400 milliliters so 700 and 700 well here's another 48 ounces or you know almost 14 milliliters <laughs> and it's, since it's mixed the same i'm hoping that we're not going to see any issues here any witness lines i mean that's the whole idea of grooving this piece out but as far as thermal cracking is concerned, it's going to be uh, really, really tough to see, uh, you know, <laughs> if this is going to thermal crack or not. So what I'm going to do right away is I'm going to throw this into my fridge. It'll be in there overnight. I know that this is an overpour. Our cast is only good for one inch deep max. 
Anything over that, well, you can expect to get thermal cracking. Thought maybe that was floating, but it isn't. The level's gonna drop off a little bit more than that, but I think that it were, I don't want, really wanna put any more in here because it's gonna definitely thermal crack of a note. Anyway, into the fridge this goes. See you guys in there tomorrow. Well, good morning. I uh, had to put Dwayne on here yesterday because uh, this started to float when I put it in the fridge. Uh, early indications are that there is no thermal cracking. There is a ton of bubbles here. Oh, it's a little sticky there too. This part feels hard. Anyway, let's get it out and see what we're uh, dealing with. So early indications are that this has been a success. So happy days for that. And in regards to the bubbles on the very top of this piece, they're going to be turned away. So that's not really a concern either. How can it come out so easy one day and then so hard the next? There she is. Ah, she's still tacky. Hmm. I think we're still going to be okay here, but I don't know. We'll have to see. So I've never done this method with Artcast. Yeah, she's ah, she's kind of rubbery. Oh, we are in trouble as far as having this done this week. Too tacky and too soft. Well, I'm going to have to put this back in the clean room in the heat. And so everybody knows uh, designer epoxy, I can't speak for other epoxies, but uh, it has to be 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit for the epoxy to cure. And uh, by putting it in the fridge, of course, you slow down that cure and then that way you don't get any thermal cracking, but it also messes with your time frame. I was hoping that there was enough volume in here that it would set regardless overnight because our cast should set in 24 hours. And, um, but it didn't. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Anyway, I guess we'll, uh, I guess we'll do this tomorrow. See you then. Starting off with the number three Hercules from Hunter Tool Systems. There is a link in the description along with all of the other sponsors to get uh, your discounts when you order through them and use my code in my gym. So like it is normally with every piece that I do, we're going to strip off the excess epoxy and stand back and have a look at this. But when I put this piece on the lathe in the morning, I'm like, okay, I think that I really know what this is going to do. So, you know, I, I kind of finished the, the bottom area while well, I started anyway. And, um, but anyway, you know, the, the, the experiment with the art cast was awesome. I'm really happy that that did work, but I will say this, that if it was a larger volume of art cast, I don't think that I would have been so lucky. And, you know, you can see the bubbles in the work here and that is, I'll say normal when you're kind of working with this type of a pour. Uh, but, you know, I reduced my time from three days. And to be perfectly honest with you, uh, after I poured the art cast, I was working on other work in the workshop for the majority of the day. And at the end of the day, when I went over and checked on the casting, it there was no issues. Like I, I probably could have put it on the lathe at that point, but of course it was five o'clock. So I was kind of done for the day. But bubbles are an issue. Uh, deep cast allows those bubbles to escape. Arc cast 
Not so much, uh, and that's got to do with open time. Uh, the longer open time that Deepcast has, it allows those bubbles to come to the surface and be eliminated. But of course, all faster setting resins, especially these one-to-ones that are really thick, this is probably something that you're going to deal with. I don't think that there's really any other way around that. Uh, even throwing it in the vacuum chamber to degas it is not really so much the problem. There wouldn't have been that much air in that casting where there was those large bubbles were left behind. That in all likelihood was probably air that was trapped underneath the casting when it went into the bucket. Maybe a solution to that would be putting a little spacer in the bottom of the bucket to allow any of that air to escape. Uh, but regardless, I mean, uh, we took something that would have taken another three days to cure and reduced it basically to a day, day and a half-ish. Since the one piece of wood lifted, uh, it pretty much forces us to finish the bottom that was the bottom inside of the bucket. Uh, the re you, you probably could have come up with a profile if you wanted to make the top, the bottom, and vice versa. But you probably would have lost a lot of size off of the piece to kind of disguise that. So I figured with that one piece that had lifted, as long as it's in the bottom of the form it's not going to be so obtrusive intrusive intrusive and um so anyway that, i mean that's what it looks like there's still some areas that we need to clean up here in the very bottom yeah i'm not i mean i'm all right i guess with it but ideally it definitely wanted i wanted it on the bottom of the casting but you know Sometimes if, if you get into this resin casting thing, you're going to find that uh, what you want and what the epoxy is going to give you are two totally different things. Uh, <laughs> I've come up with some really neat looking castings by mistake. And then I've, you know, had to work with failed castings that I was never happy with. Uh, that's not the case with this one. I'm, I'm actually really happy with the way this looks. Uh, but in a perfect world, yeah, that bottom piece would still be there still got some trimming to do but i mean that gives you a sense of what the bottom of this piece is going to look like there's another close-up of the number three hercules essentially the number one is pretty much the same thing just smaller i thought i'd you know there's a lot of people still wanting to see an up close view of the tools so i'll do that again and uh the only other Hunter tool that we use here is, well, besides the retrofit tools, is the Phoenix. And I'll show that a little later on as well. So yeah, still, you know, I'm going deeper and deeper into this casting, still exposing more bubbles. For the most part, they do disappear and we do come up with a unique form. Uh, one of the main things that I really wanted on this piece was those three pieces of wood being basically shown on the top because... The, the color variation within them, I think, really makes a neat look. Well, as you can see, uh, we've determined what's going to be the top and what's going to be the bottom. Really like this pattern on the front. So I want to try and preserve this. This is kind of almost like the lilac covered dish that I did. Same sort of look. But I think um, I like this little... This little whoop de doo you know, this little ski jump. And, uh, but, you know, there's some missing here. This still needs to be taken down because it's still not all the way down yet. So we need to trim this down a bit. And hopefully we will, for the most part, eliminate this. We'll keep this detail. I think that I'll do, I don't know, I'll probably put a waste block on the bottom of this. 
And I want to do a hollow form with this. A, kind of a, I'm going to taper this so that it's more on an angle. And I think just looking down on the very top of this is uh, what this piece really wants to be. As far as the uh, resins are concerned, uh, I, I completely missed the color. <laughs> so I, I reviewed the footage. I thought that I had mixed it the same. I don't know if because it's art cast and it, you know, it cures faster that that's why it's got a different color to it. But I'll have to look back again and, and see, make sure that I did mix it correctly. But anyway, regardless, the two-tone look, I actually really like. And it's dug into some pieces, some of the wood pieces. A little bit down here, I've turned away some of it. But uh, I think that in the end, it's gonna look, a, it's gonna look really neat. So anyway, we'll cut this down a little further, dome this a little bit, then we'll drill our hole and start hollowing. Uh, I gotta get a waste block on the bottom of this though. Yeah, I don't know. Might just leave it how it is. I don't know, I'll figure it out as we go. So what I think threw the color off a little bit is on the initial pour with the deep cast and it's sitting in that U, there's no doubt that it pulls some color from that. And then of course on the second pour, you're not gonna get that because it's sealed off. Uh, the other thing is, I poured uh, 1,500 milliliters the first pour. The second pour was 1,400 milliliters. So that's going to throw the color off a little bit. And the thermal action of the epoxy is going to be different. So I think the combination of all three of those put together uh, is the reason why the color is not the same. By all means, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think. All right, so right down in here... There's a very deep hole. Let's see how far this goes. Yikes. That deep. That's, uh, that's deep. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna use the UV resin. I'm not gonna tint it. Uh, and then of course I'll leave the light on here for probably five minutes. The UV light will penetrate through this but I'm hoping that there'll be enough light going down through the opening here that it'll cure the, uh, the resin. This cavity might be actually larger than I thought it was. Now I do thoroughly cure this, uh, this resin, uh, but if it was tinted, I don't know if I would add the same results. So that's why I stuck with clear, if you're wondering. Anyway, if you haven't seen this before, it's cured with UV light. I'm probably gonna leave this on here for a good solid 10 minutes. And hopefully the UV light will be able to penetrate through the resin and cure any of it that may be deeper down inside of the casting. Uh, other than that, I mean, once we get this hollowed out, we might be able to uh, do it on the inside of this form as well. Anyway, we'll be back on the lathe and reversed and do the foot and we'll come back. So I am gonna put a glue block on the bottom of this, but before I do that, I wanna make sure that the foot area has been trimmed and is ready for that. Uh, if I had to just, I, I knew that I didn't have a lot of space down where the glue block was gonna be applied. So it was important to trim that away to make sure that it was ready for sanding before the glue block went on. Anyway, once I get this all trimmed up, we'll be able to reverse this yet again. Now the tenon that I turned on the top here, well, it's not very large. So the, because I'm using the dovetail jaws, it certainly seems to be holding fine. But, you know, there isn't a lot of meat holding on to this. So, you know, once I remove the tailstock, I am going to take some pretty light cuts. Probably a safer way to do this would have been just to throw some 60 grit onto uh, the sanding pad and grind it down with, with, the, uh, with the drill instead of tooling it. But, hey, I figured that I would give it a go to see what the results would be. And in the end, it actually worked quite well. But I am taking very light cuts and I did check to make sure that it was still securely um, secure in the chalk. 
because nobody wants anything flying across the workshop. Even though it does make for a great video, I would prefer not to see it. So I'm just using a little bit of 60 grit on the very bottom to give the hot melt glue a nice tooth to bond to. And uh, as you can see, I don't spare any glue. I give that about 10 minutes and then now I'm using the 5 8 bowl gouge by David Ellsworth to clean this up. And then now uh, once that's done, you know, this, this tendon here will be a lot more robust and due to the size of it, you know, very, very unlikely that it's going to come detached from the bottom of this piece. But we have seen that happen in the past now, haven't we? Doesn't happen this time around, <laughs> but it certainly can happen. But the larger the glue block that you put on there, and I should mention that this is a piece of yellow birch that I'm using. Uh, so it's kind of, it's not soft and it's not real hard. And I think that's pretty much ideal for waste blocks that are put on the bottom of your pieces. So here's your weekly house selling update and for those who are not familiar if you're new to my channel my wife and I are selling our current home here in eastern Ontario and moving to the province of New Brunswick which is our home province. There is the Phoenix another close-up of that to give you an idea what the end of that tool looks like and uh, this past week we've had no showings um, little to no interest to be quite honest with you Paul. As far as we know, no interest at all because we never had a showing. Uh, my wife and I are still working on the house and uh, the deck is finally done and the new countertops have been installed in the kitchen. So right now we are in the process of removing the tile backsplash, which has been an absolute nightmare to be honest with you. My wife did all the tiling in our house she's great at that and um well she when she builds stuff she builds it like me when i build stuff i intend it to never be taken apart and when she put that tile on she intended it for it to never come off <laughs> so it has been very very hard to do anyway we're still in the process of removing it so there i mean that gives you kind of what the top part of that Holoform is going to look like and I don't think that we've made any shape like this before so uh, I think that it well I really like the look of it and hopefully you guys do as well so uh, I know some people want to see pictures of everything and when everything is done I will either do a walkthrough and, and post it here but uh, anyway we figure we're probably a good solid week away and uh, then we'll be ready to uh, have our first showing with the new upgrades we are all set up and ready for hollowing this is the one-way hollowing system captive system from oneway.ca i'm using the 3 8 inch retrofit tool from hunter tool systems and of course i've got my steady rest in place and we're using dovetail jaws so things should not go anywhere <laughs> let's hope uh, I'm not going to bother with my laser just yet. Once we get in here and open up some room, then I'll I'll set the laser up. But uh, anyway, we've got the, some thunderstorms happening, so you might hear that in the background. But anyway, let's see how we do. As far as removing the inside of this, is actually pretty routine. Nothing much to report there. I, I'm not using the 3 8 I'm using the quarter-inch retrofit tool. The 3 8 is actually considerably larger than that. And of course, I've got two 3 16 inch ones, and I've got a round one, and of course, I've got the 3 8 one. Uh, the smaller 3 16 inch ones work well on the bent bars that come with this system. And of course, this system has the bent bar and the double bent bar, and we'll see both of those here in this video. But uh, it also has a smaller straight boring bar, which I don't ever use. I always use this big, heavy boring bar that you see here. Uh, it just tends to vibrate less. So, you know, the um, in a perfect world, uh, you know, it's not the first time that we've done tile work. I would have probably cut that section of drywall off in, in the kitchen 
and then just put new drywall on and of course put the new tile on that problem is this house has two pound spray foam on the outside walls and if you've ever tried to remove drywall from two pound spray foam forget it uh, it is virtually impossible uh, the electricians when we built this place had to open up one of the walls here and um, it was not any fun <laughs> at all so I know that it's not really an option on the outside walls on the inside walls uh, you know, obviously it's not going to be there and we may be able to do that on one wall that might be an option but you know ideally I'd like to leave it on and and uh, remove it normally <laughs> Uh, some people question why, if I have a laser, why am I measuring by hand? And the reason for that is because of the wheels and the bar for the steady rest. I lose probably a good inch and a half at the very top or wherever the wheels are situated. So a lot of times I'm forced to measure by hand to make sure that I'm not going through the sidewalls. I know that there's been a couple people ask that and, and that's the reason for it. Down deeper in the form, not a problem, but up near the top where the wheels and the, um, the steady rest, well, they just, you can't do it. It's, uh, you're risking it if you don't measure it by hand. So I always kind of err on the side of caution because I really don't want to go through the sidewall on this thing after all the time and effort that I've got into this piece. That's for sure. For those who are curious about how the bars get changed out, there's just two set screws on the side, quite easy actually. And then of course on the top, that's how you move the laser around so it lines up uh, with the tip of the tool. So you can put it on the tip of the tool. I, for the most part, will leave a gap between the laser and the tip of the tool. And of course the whole principle behind that is that when that laser drops off the outside of the form then you know that you've achieved your wall thickness in most cases you know my, my wall thickness is set at about a half inch and then from there I'll take smoothing cuts just to try and get rid of any little lumps and bumps that might be still present inside the form so that's just a little extension piece that goes on the end of the boring bar the straight boring bar and again I can fix the retrofit tools from Hunter Tool Systems to it and it actually works quite nicely. Right, I just thought I'd show you a look inside before we start sanding. Overall I'm pretty happy with that. You know I really like the look of this. Anyway, sanding next. So there's the drill extension. Uh, been some questions about that as well. Uh, here in Canada, I got this one at Princess Auto. I think I also got one at Lee Valley. I don't know any other place in Canada, but of course, uh, down in the States, I'm assuming any place, any of these Craft Supplies USA, any place that sells wood turning supplies should have these available as well. Uh, Alan, I'll, I'll just use his first name. He did send me a handle uh, to go on to this, but I just did not have time to put it on. I was really, really stretched for time. So we'll see that in an upcoming video. I was dealing with some tear out on the very top of this, and I figured that I'm going to try some shear scraping with the gouge to get rid of it. For the most part in that area, it's mostly wood so it seemed to work out actually quite well and then you'll see me do a, a really true shear scrape here in a second but anyway um the bushings for the handle that he sent to use the extension needed to be drilled out and i just i just didn't have time so sorry i didn't get in in the video today alan but it certainly will be uh, the next time I use it that shear scraping works great don't be afraid to try it not really going to screw a whole lot up uh, so I do recommend doing the shear scraping it's a lot better than sanding forever because that's kind of how it goes sometimes 
If you don't get that, that tear out out of those pieces, you're doing lots of sanding. Now I should mention that we are sanding from 60 to 180 on the inside and the outside of this form because we're going to do another uh, epoxy coat and uh, really like this really like the idea of using the epoxy coat because it really seals up that end grain. This is three ounces of the Pro Series. Anyway, I'll leave that upside down for about 10 minutes and then we'll put the coat on the outside. So along with sealing up the end grain so that it's not, you know, it doesn't take as many coats of finish to do this kind of work. It will also fill in any little bubbles that are left behind. And, you know, we did have a few in this casting and that's just because of the art cast and, and what we were dealing with. But the other important thing is after this gets put on with the, with the, the silicone barbecue brush is to rub it in with your hand and that will break surface tension and it'll push that epoxy into those bubbles and seal them up and get rid of them. It is definitely busy and uh, the two epoxies I think go well together. And I don't think looking at this you'd say oh well, that was a second pour got screwed up on the first time around so uh, that's the whole goal here when you do a second pour. Anyway, let me know what you uh, think about this in the comments. As you can see, parts of it are drying out already on the top. So I'll give that another, uh, another brush with the uh, barbecue brush. And we'll see you tomorrow for the first coat of water rocks. Well, good morning. And it actually is morning. It's 8 o'clock. Uh, the plan today, it's actually Thursday, so I'm going to um, start sanding at 180 and we'll go all the way to 800 and I'll put a coat of Waterlux on. I haven't edited this video at all or done the voiceover, so then I'll go back inside and I'll do all the editing and come back out and finish uh, the outro, but we will not have a finished foot because this will take at least two coats of Waterlux, probably three. And down inside, I don't even know if you're going to be able to see in there, but it, um, it's foamed up pretty bad. So I'll need to sand that on the inside too. But it uh, looks like the epoxy coat has done its job. So let's sand this back and see what we're looking at. So as you can imagine, it's important to protect your lungs. So that's why I'm wearing a self-powered respirator. And this is the Power Cap by JSP. I have been having some issues with the on off button on it so I need to get a hold of Peak Safety who sold it to me and see if there can be anything done about that but you know really important to, to wear something to protect your lungs. Uh, this is Tripoli, Tripoli as in the city of Tripoli buffing compound from the Beale buffing system. Once we get this buffed we'll clean it up with a denatured alcohol and get uh, our first coat of Waterlux on. Okay, this is your first coat of Waterlux Gloss. Okay, probably not a huge difference between yesterday and today, other than the fact that uh, the finish is quite flat. I don't mind that. I would have preferred that it be all the way to the bottom like these, but you know, as they say, it is what it is. Two-tone resin. What do you think about the collar too? I didn't really talk much about that yesterday. Just to give a little bit more profile. Well, that's going to do it. Time to go edit. I'll talk to you when I'm when I'm done with that at the end here. We're not going to be able to do the foot. This is going to be it. Well, here we are. <laughs> Still in the chalk. Uh, it actually looks really good. To be quite honest with you, 
you can tell that it definitely needs another coat. There's some small little dry areas in some of the end grain on the top. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up or not. You'll probably see it in the rotating footage at the end. But on the sides, because it's side grain, of course, it doesn't absorb as much finish. It actually looks quite nice. Be interesting to see what this looks like when it's lit up too. And I'll show that again at the, uh, at the very end here in the rotating footage. Size on this piece, eight and a half inches across and about five and a half inches tall. It's a little hard to, to measure, but I believe that's what it is. Anyway, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this piece. I think that it's really cool looking and I hope you guys do as well. Don't forget to put Designer Epoxy in the comments down below to be entered into the next giveaway at 130,000 subscribers when we get there. Of course, that's only for continental USA and Canada. And when you use my code InlayGym with Designer Epoxy, you'll get 10% off your order, free shipping within continental USA and Canada, and at least five free color bags with that order. So please check, out, check them out. And along with all of my other sponsors in the description down below, if you use code inlay gym, you'll get a discount with them as well. Uh, as far as what's happening next week, <laughs> I've got it poured. Uh, it's something that I've been wanting to do for a while, and it's a piece using scrap pieces. So I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Let your imaginations run wild. All right, well, that's it. Take care, stay safe. Don't forget the bell. Please share my videos with your friends. That is the largest way for me to build my presence here on YouTube. And uh, hey, hit that subscribe button. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything. And of course, don't forget your bell notification. That way you know when a new video goes up every Friday at 9 a.m. though. All right, well, that's it. Have a great weekend. See you next week.